Hey everyone, I just finished playing the game that you are watching right now as Rome doing our how to win a culture game series on Civilization 6. I hope you enjoy the video. We kind of landed the plane. There's not a lot that's going to surprise you in this video, but it's a really good kind of showing on how to land the plane on a regular culture victory in Civilization 6. If you enjoy this video, let me know what you thought in the comments. Hit the like and subscribe button and definitely check the description for links to the Twitch where we stream Civ all the time. Twitch.tv slash Van Bradley is the place to be. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoy this video. And more importantly, I hope you learned something. We are in a really good position to win the game here. We have 196 culture per turn. Nobody else has hit 50 yet. <laughs> Barely anyone has breached 40 yet. We also have 160 cult or science per turn. And no one else has breached 60 yet. Oh, Australia has 70. Well done. Well done to Australia, but overall we're in a really good position to win this game. We just have to make our dreams a reality, and that is what the next 50 or so turns will be focused on. So if you guys remember that we ran our campus research grants here, we ran this project that gave us a great uh, scientist points per turn and a little bit of science per turn. If we go into the great people screen and we go to great scientists, we can see that we earned 58 points last turn, right? So you can just see how many points we got from that project now obviously that's added to part of the 50 is all of our campuses and all those types of things but it's a good chunk of great scientist points every time you finish and what's good to know is you get them all at the very end right so you don't get them along the way you get them all at the very end once you research the project in some of our cities right now we are having housing and amenity problems the amenity problems are just because we are pretty much stuck on one continent and each continent only spawns four different resources now you can get multiple types of those resources and that is what we are selling to the ai but in terms of the count for amenities you're limited to one of each type so we have cocoa olives diamonds and marble we have one of each so we're kind of maxed out there um, ocean resources don't count towards that. So we have a fifth luxury resource here in Pearls. So the best thing we can do is find somebody on another continent that has resources that we don't have and trade them one for one. So if we have two cocoa and they have two coffee and we don't have coffee, trading cocoa for coffee is a good way to get rid of some of these amenity problems. I suspect we'll be able to get the great merchants that give us amenities as well. And then the housing problems are going to be fixed up as soon as we get to sewers here. Once we build sewers here, they give two housing to each city and are relatively quick to build. And so if you're wondering why I'm kind of ignoring the housing problems for now, it's because the sewers are not far away and that's where we will be heading. So we have pretty much scouted as much as we can scout on land. We're on a Pangea map, so I was a bit hesitant to go into the ocean because I know this just doesn't end anywhere. But what I want to see with this uh, slinger, I'm going to send him into the ocean here. And we're just going to see if there's any uh, little islands skulking about that we might be able to settle. Or that might have something on there that we're interested in. In your cities with a harbor, you definitely want to build the lighthouse right away. It works the same as a market as long as you don't actually have a commercial hub as well, where it's just the harbor. That lighthouse is going to give us another trade route. And with this 1250 gold, I'm going to keep buying either art museums or archaeologists at the first chance I get. Like this. Yoink. We also have at this point as well, we have researched natural history so in the cities with archaeological museums we're going to want to build archaeologists and we are approaching conservation which with conservation we can get naturalists which will build national parks we'll talk about those once we have one that we can get also um uh this ability here allows us to plant woods now planting woods is going to be super crucial for us to increase the appeal of all of our tiles give us a little more production and uh, it synergizes with Eiffel Tower as well. So we'll talk about that once we can do it. But just know that conservation is kind of a double whammy for us. We're going to want the naturalist for national parks. And we're going to want the ability to plant woods. Planting woods takes a builder charge. So I'm going to get some builders ready in some of these cities to plant woods. And chop the rainforest up the second that they are able to once we get uh, conservation here. For a national park, what you need are you are going to need four tiles in the same city that are all owned by the same city. So these four tiles here, they need to be in a diamond formation. So one, two, three, four. They need to all have at least charming appeal. So they have to be green. So you need four green tiles all owned in the same city, right? And with no improvements on them. Right, so if one here, two here, three or four here, all in the same city, all green and no improvements, this is going to be where we build our first national park. 
We have acquired another great artist and we have a great work of art slots in Ravenna and Lugdunum. I'm not too worried about which city we put them in. We filled out the city with Pingala first, which is the most important thing. The next thing we're going to do is just kind of pick a city. Once we have enough of these, we're going to be moving them around anyway to theme them, which we're still going to talk about in just a little minute. We have completed conservation. Two big things have happened. The first thing we need to talk about is national parks. Now, we've already talked about how to build a national park and what the requirements are. If you don't know if your tiles have green appeal, you can go over and click the appeal lens here. Eiffel Tower is going to make this all a lot easier. So are planting woods, which we'll talk about second. The first thing we're going to do here and the reason why we've been trying to build up a little bit of faith is because these naturalists are expensive the first one starts at 600 believe it or not this is way cheaper than they used to be so if you buy a naturalist here and you click on the naturalist it'll show you the four tiles that you selected to be a national park now remember you can't put anything on these tiles except for woods you can put woods on the tile and it doesn't count as an improvement but no farms no mines no fuss, no muss, no districts, nothing. So these are four kind of naked tiles with all green appeal in the same city, right? And the next thing we're going to talk about is planting woods. So you can see this builder on a floodplains cannot plant woods. But you can see this builder on the non-floodplains tiles can. Now, if we plant these woods, it doesn't count towards a national park. Now, in this case, it doesn't matter because we have improved the cocoa and the wheat. But what it does do is it does give good appeal to all the tiles around it. So you can imagine if we went to every tile that just has nothing on it right now and put woods down, not only could we add a lumber mill to those woods, which does count as an improvement, but for production, if we want to add a little bit of production, we could add a lumber mill to the woods. But even just planting the woods adds production to the tile doesn't count towards a national park in terms of improving the tile and gives us greater appeal, makes these tiles around it more green than they were. So it's overall such an important thing to do for a culture victory. Synergizes really well with Eiffel Tower, which increases the appeal of all tiles in your empire by two. So with the woods and Eiffel Tower, you should have almost all your tiles be nice big green tiles. We're gonna head into civil engineering next because I would like plus 15% production towards all wonders to finish off the Forbidden City and to work on the Eiffel Tower when we get there. To build your national park, you just need to go to one of the four tiles, whichever one you can get. Keep in mind, you only need to be able to access one tile. So if you wanted to build a national park, say right here, one, two, three, four. You can build a national park on this tile, even though you can't walk on these three. But once you're at your desired location, you just press designate national park you get era score each time you build a national park which is awesome but it gives us tourism as well now you can see we have lug dunham national park uh, and it's good to go it's very very beautiful isn't it this great merchant is going to be really handy for us here. It instantly builds a bank and a market in the district, which is great, but also gives us two great work slots, which can hold anything. So we're going to use this right away, just in almost any commercial hub. I care much more about the two great work slots than I do about the bank and the market because I can put anything in them. I shall now use the commercial hub that I put the great merchant in and start using oh, my oh, Romeo and Juliet, William Shakespeare. Start using my great writer in there now that it can hold two spots. All right, it is turn 169. You can see we are well on our way to Forbidden City. We have a lot of great works getting put down. We are currently replacing all kinds of rainforests, which give negative appeal for woods, which give positive appeal, which is awesome. We also have, if we take a look at our victory screen here, we have 15 out of 59 tourists. Everyone else needs 130, which is pretty ridiculous. Pachacuti's got four, which is awesome for Pachacuti. I'm not too worried about him catching up to us. We seem to be on a good pace. We are getting really close to Eiffel Tower, which is going to be critical for us. And we're already at 247 culture per turn, which is way more than anyone else has in this game. So we are cruising for a bruise, and this is going to be... Uh, we just got to land the plane. We just got to land the plane now. World Congress is in the house, which is awesome. Finally, something we care about. We are short of amenities, and I would love to double up our cocoa. We have like five cocoa that we're having a hard time selling. So I'm going to put like 10 votes into cocoa. This is awesome for us. And I don't care about the military unit one at all. I'll just put anything. But let's see if we can get cocoa to double amenities here. Ah, oh, someone outvoted us for furs to get no amenities. Not that that has a negative effect on us, but I really thought we'd try and win on the Coco being, uh, the Coco duplicates granting amenities, but, oh, that sucks. That really sucks. 
So you can see, even just removing the two rainforests here and putting two woods down, things are starting to look a lot more green. This tile's got Earth Goddess now, which is fantastic. Look, all these woods we just put down here, making this look a little more green. So things are trending in the upward direction on the appeal here. I'm just using, my, uh, using mitochondria right now. It's just a builder farm. Builders going out, planting woods everywhere. I've got two builders coming up to Rome. We need to prioritize getting woods and lumber mills down on some of these tiles because we are building the Eiffel Tower in this city because it's the only city with a decent amount of production, but also the ability to build the Eiffel Tower in it. Now that we've finished uh, discovering steel, like I mentioned earlier, you want to head up to Flight. Flight gives you a lot of tourism, not so much for us this game, but in a lot of Clio games and France games, it really helps. There's a few other things as well that it really helps with. I won't mention them all because everything will tell you will receive more tourism once Flight is hit. So there's Flight right there. And then we got to head up to Computers to get plus 25% tourism across our entire empire, which is pretty bonkers for us. The, the city is the city axis. is forbidden it's forbidden the, the city that's forbidden the is in the middle of a palaces. city that you can see is it weird to have a city within a city the forbidden city is in the city what is happening right now all right so we got the forbidden city that's going to make rome two tiles bigger which is awesome it's going to give us appeal it's going to give us tourism now, if we go to the Forbidden City, one of the main things it does is gives us an extra wildcard policy slot, which is awesome. Um, plus five culture is great as well. For our extra policy card, card, I'm going to slide in skyscrapers so we can build the Eiffel Tower as quickly as possible. It is time to build the Eiffel Tower. That was that was very climactic. I shall be using Reina's ability in Kumai here to buy ourselves a holy site with like, I think it's 600 gold, just to keep that faith number up a little bit, inching a little bit higher here. I will then go and find places where we do not have theater squares and buy as many of those as possible to have as many great work slots as possible. So we can hold all of our great works of writing and art and music and all that stuff. As you can see too, everything's starting to fill out. We don't got a lot of empty space here. So things are starting to look kind of good for us. I think at this point in the game, it's pretty safe to go Amani and just put her in Antananarivo because we want to make sure that we do not lose the city state under any cost. It's giving us plus 30% culture right now. So we're just going to put Amani in there, get our two extra envoys and make sure we do not lose that city state no matter what for the rest of the game. We don't have any more national park areas until we either put down a bunch more woods or until we finish building our wonder so i'm going to spend the 500 faith here to get this um engineer it's not going to be a lot of production towards eiffel tower but every t every little bit quicker that we can build the eiffel tower is very important for us so we'll buy that there so we just got a notice from the game that our culture victory is imminent. So we are starting to get more appeal down. We are starting to get a lot of great works and it seems like it's overwhelming the AI. I'm not even doing anything special other than collecting great works, increasing the appeal of my tiles by putting woods down. And it says we're gonna win the game in 10 turns. I don't know how accurate that is. This counter is terrible and it's always off, never believe it. But we might sew this game up by turn 188, which would be awesome for us because I'm hoping to do this in under 200 turns. The next thing we want to look at is going into mass media. Crystal Redentor um, really helps kind of block tourism from the other civs. It makes it harder for the other civilizations to collect tourists from your empire. Tourism output from relics and holy cities is not diminished by other civilizations who have researched the Enlightenment Civic. Plus 100% tourism from seaside resorts across your civilization must be built on hills so crystal redento is another one of those wonders that you really want to aim for along with eiffel tower to make sure you are kind of kind of landing the plane with that culture victory we're going for here we have 1100 gold again so i'm right on cue to buy another uh, culture building we have four art museums now so i'm gonna go for my second archaeological museum in Mediolanum. mediolanum that's how you say it so we just checked and we're pretty safe in Nanmodel and Antananarivo. So now it's time to just pile all our envoys into Babylon. Take that over from Robert the Bruce, which is going to give us... And... Tell us. Two science from each great work of writing, plus one science from each relic and artifact. Awesome. So I get a little bit of extra science. Thank you much, Lee. Woohoo! We now have a second spot for a national park. One, two, three, four green tiles. Nothing on them. 
all owned by the same city after we swap this one. So there we go. We can now purchase our naturalist here, which costs 700 faith. Second national park is going down. There we go. Look at that bad boy. Rome National Park. Over here too, we found a couple little islands. It's not really doing much for us. Nowhere we're gonna settle, but it did give us plus five era score for having circumnavigated the whole map, which puts us right in the middle of a golden age for the next era with about 10 turns left till the era switches, which is awesome for us. I didn't even realize that there was a city down here that, whose loyalty we were flipping, but we have taken T.I. Dreyaha for a loyalty flip. Now this is a terrible city, but what it will do is the appeal's all gray right now. So once we get Eiffel Tower, all of these tiles will be nice and green, which gives us two national parks down here at the very least. So we're gonna keep this city and the era score just so we can get national parks and for no, no other reason at all. What do you get when two horses and a scout are stuck on an island together? Oh my God. Oh my God. It's Barbarian Station. This is awesome. We have our first archaeologist, which is going to find artifacts to fill our archaeological museums. Uh, much like settling cities, I want to go for the ones that are going to be harder to get. Now, on Prince difficulty, I wouldn't worry about making the AI so angry because we are so far ahead of them right now that even if they were mad at us, they don't really have um, a way to really attack us or anything. So we are going to go and send our archaeologists into the other sifts to steal their antiquity sites and get artifacts that belong to them. It is important that we try to get artifacts that belong to different people so we can theme them later, which I'm hoping we'll get the chance to talk about. All right, so we can kind of theme now. We, we're not allowed to theme a full museum yet, but in this art museum, you can see we have three religious paintings all by Rublev. What the game is trying to look for is three of the same piece of art. So three religious paintings, but by different people. So these are all by the same people. So they get a one boost. If we move this one, which is a religious painting, but by Michelangelo instead of Rublev, we get theming two. So we have two different people, right? Which gives us a little bit of a boost, but we need all three to get the full theming boost. It's the same effect here. We have Donatello, Michelangelo, and then Michelangelo again. So we have two different people for the theming boost of two but they're all sculptures, which is important. They're all the same type. I'm gonna grab Victor with my next governor title just to make sure that this city here doesn't lose any loyalty. I doubt it will, I'm not worried at all, but it's good to have a little bit of a uh, defense built up just in case. So when you have your archeologist and you would like to work in antiquity, antiquity site, you just move your archeologist over top, you click the excavate artifact, and there we go. We can, uh, oh, it says choose artifact, but in this case, your archaeologist has uncovered signs of an ancient tribal village encountered by Trajan. What? I wanted not artifact not from Trajan. That's why I came all the way over here. That's fine. It's fine. We got a javelin from Trajan. Awesome stuff. All right. I want everyone to look at how green this map is here where we are. You can see it's getting a lot more green now that we have all those woods down. All right. But we are one turn away from Eiffel Tower. So we will check back in on how green this map is. Um, and how much Earth Goddess we're getting. We're currently at 88 faith per turn after the Eiffel, Eiffel Tower is finished. I ought to be jealous of the tower. Bonjour, bonjour, baguette, baguette. Aujourd'hui, Eiffel Tower. All right, let's see what we got. I want, I want to see how green the empire is. I want to see how many national parks we can build. I want to see, I want to see lots of different things here. I want to see how much faith we have. All right, so it's going to take a turn to update, but as you can see, <laughs> everything's green and we're getting faith on every single tile. Look at that. There's a national park there. Where is there more? There's a national park right there. Here's a now. No, no, we're working that tile. That's already two. It's already two and I haven't even started really trying to look. That is so good. That is so good. I'm so happy right now. Awesome, so Eiffel Tower coming in hot, making the whole empire look real pretty, giving us lots of faith. I wanna know, what is that? What is the actual amount of faith there? I think it's time to build a theater square in Rome, for sure. You wanna get the plus four for being between both wonders, so we will do that. I wanna know what the actual um, amount is. Also, it's going to cost us 800, but our next naturalist is going right here. 
It got upgraded to 158. So we went from 88 to 158 just by having the Eiffel Tower. That's so ridiculous. Our tourism is also up to 148, which is not nearly enough. Um, it's it's, it's going to get much, much higher. But 148 is not too bad for right now. We now have enough funds to purchase a theater square in Setia. I don't really need it to be a good theater square. I just need it to have buildings to hold things because I have a lot of great uh, works of writing and great works of art that have nowhere to live yet. And even more. We have even more great works of writing with nowhere to live yet. All of our alliances have run out, so I'm going to re renew those really quick to keep the open borders and the alliance points. Third National Park going down, baby. Never gets old. Never gets old. There are a few things going in mitochondria right now. I'm going to build the diplomatic quarter here. I have some spies. We're going to talk about them in a second. But I want to make sure no one can get rid of Pinkala in this city and spy on us. So we're going to build the diplo quarter to keep us nice and safe right next to the city center here. I'm also going to send our spy out. We just built our first spy. The best way to get a spy leveled up early is to go and send it on a mission to siphon funds, which it looks like we might be able to do in Sterling. I'm going to head back and grab sanitation here so we can have sewers in our cities, thus allowing us to have more housing. And then we're going to come up right away and grab computers for the extra 25% tourism across our empire. It is time for us to build the Christo Redentor in Mitochondria. I'm going to build an amphitheater in Rome quick, obviously, for more great great works of writing uh, spaces. But then we're going to head for the intelligence agency. I don't want to spend my faith on units because I want to spend it on national parks and rock bands when we get them. We don't really need foreign, foreign ministry. In fact, I don't think I've ever taken foreign ministry. So intelligence agency will come next and at least give us a free spy. Up in Lugdunum, Colosseum is still available. It's a great wonder. It's still available. I didn't really plan on it because I forget that you can get it on Prince. I, you normally can't get it on Deity. We built this entertainment complex here just for the adjacency to this theater square. But I think this is a tile we're not really using. So if we can get the Colosseum in eight turns, why not give it a try? We are going to double up our national parks. We're going to have two Medio Lanham national parks. Let's rock and roll, baby. Oh, that feels so good. That feels so good. Bumping up those tourism numbers. Let's rock and roll. You want to make sure when you are building your uh, woods everywhere that you don't completely neglect farms or else no one's going to have the food to actually grow. So you just want to build, build woods on every tile. You want to put a lot of woods down, but the farms are still important. So make sure you get your farms down, kids. So for this next artifact, we have a choice. You want to choose three different people. There's still more requirements to theme them, but I know we got a Trajan one last time, so we can go Robert the Bruce or Robert the Bruce, Robert the Bruce or Barbarians. I'm gonna go Robert the Bruce because I think Barbarians will be easier to find overall. And we got an axe. Cool. We now have sewers, and they're relatively easy to build. So eight turns there will solve some of the housing problems in Kumai. Finishing up Ideology has now allowed us to combine some of our cards. Campus and Industrial Zones are now together, which is awesome for us. Commercial Hubs and Harbors are together. I don't really want to take that out yet because I still want this Wonder card in here. Open Borders with all City States and four Influence Points is really good for us right now to keep our Envoys in those City States, so we will keep doing that. And up in Military Policies, there's not one that I'm really loving. You know, I just don't think it really matters that much. Let's go with... Oh, boy. Let's just reduce unit maintenance. Why not? I don't think any of those cards really make a difference. Jadviga doesn't want to be friends with me anymore, which is just straight up rude. Just how unacceptably mean of her. While the Colosseum stands... Rome shall stand. I can't remember the last the game I was allowed falls, to build the Colosseum Rome in. You just can't fall. build it on Deity, when but here Rome we are. Falls. Just cruising along with the Coliseum. Look at that. Look at that sexy boy. We have got Democracy, which is going to be our next government. So we are going to head up to Cold War so we can get Rock Bands. I'm hoping I get to use Rock Bands before I win, but I'm not really sure if I will. 
Now that we have the option of going democracy, you can actually get a penalty for being too many governments ahead of the AI in terms of the culture you are creating and the tourists you are recruiting. So you see there, it says overall tourism reduced 0% for different governments. So if you have different governments, you get a, uh, a reduction in your tourism rate, which really sucks because ideally you want as high of a tourism as possible. And so having um, it be 0% for everyone, means I probably don't want to go into democracy right away because even though the policy cards might be nice and democracy might be nice, it might give me negative tourism right now. And I'm thriving at this moment with recruiting tourists. We're at 50 out of 70, working at a steady pace, just about to land the plane. And so I don't really want to shake things up. So I'm going to hold off on democracy for a little bit here, just until we are, um, or till the AI catches up a little bit with culture. I am just realizing now that in this latest patch, you cannot spy on your allies anymore. So the only place we can really head is Krakow, where we will place our spy. Another national park. Let's go, baby. Oh, I like how it looks when the two national parks. That's a big national park for Rome. Look at that bad boy. I think this archer's in trouble, you guys. I think he's. I think this archer's done. I think this archer's resting in peace. I don't think these, these boats look bigger than these boats. Six turn art museum sounds grand. We just have 1600 gold. Let's go buy a art museum down here in Genizo. We know how broadcast centers, broadcast centers are your cultural powerhouses. So we will start building them where we can. Oh, look at that. So many broadcast centers. We are in a golden age with Australia and Pachacuti, where Persia and Jadviga are not in golden ages, so we might be able to flip some of their cities, which would be very fun for us. I think in this case, traders not being plundered is great because um, obviously your trade routes can't get plundered, but we're allies with almost everyone. I don't think anyone's plundering our trade routes. So we're going to go campus districts also provide production with Heartbeat of Steam, and that'll be our pick. Oh man, that's not what I wanted. We have flipped a Cyrus city. Look at that. We'll keep Tarsus. Why not? Let's keep Tarsus. Yeah, get out of here, Cyrus. Get out of here. Yeah, Goose. This one's losing loyalty too. Gordian. Fascinating stuff. I love national parks. They make me feel good about myself. All right, so we have 59 out of 73 tourists. We're not winning in four turns, but we are landing the plane. I repeat, we are landing the plane. All right, we have acquired rock bands. So now I can explain to you how rock bands work and at least use one of them so you can see how they attract tourism to the empire. Rock bands are usually your final line of attack before you smash in a culture victory. So let's purchase a rock band. You want to buy one in a city near an enemy city to start. Next up is environmentalism with plus 25% tourism across our entire empire. Each rock band, you need to give a name and a promotion. So they all come with one promotion. The best promotion is album cover art. Performs as if one level more experience on wonder tiles. It'll usually tell you what ability it does. Pretty much what you want to do is pick an ability where it gives you more tourism or performs better on a certain tile. Find those tiles in other empires and use your um rock band to rock the world and increase your tourism and bring people over so we will take album cover art plus one more experience on wonder tiles is fantastic and we will name this guy ding dong mcgee i usually name it after the people who have recently gifted subs on twitch and then if you click it it'll tell you all the places you can use the rock band it'll also tell you places that aren't the one that you picked Oh, maybe it's only recommending wonders right now. How nice is that? Usually it just highlights all of them, but right now it's just highlighting the wonders for me. Well, that's a bonus. Look at that. So these are all the wonders that I can perform at. It has now turned 216 and we are up to 447 culture and 278 science. Not exactly my best outing ever, but certainly not a bad performance at all. We are going to find a wonder in another civilization and get started. You want to click perform rock concert. Once you perform the rock concert, you get a little jingle. Ding Dong McGee has performed. They have died. What? Get that garbage out of here. They somehow managed to die, even though they were on a wonder, but that's all right. We generated 2000 tourism and that's kind of what you're hoping to do. So that's 10 turns worth of tourism because we're at 266. It's like eight turns or seven turns worth of tourism. 
All right, but that's kind of how you want to approach rock bands. We are now at 64 out of 75 tourists with just a full slate, just a full um, a set of museums in all our cities. So we should be landing this plane relatively shortly here. I'm going to grab another rock band and try again. Promotion Let's Go performs as if it's more experienced on theater square tiles. Uh, we'll just go with Radical History. I think renaming it had a bad vibe last time. It's saying we're two turns away. It's saying we're two turns away. I think we got this. All right, we've hit computers. Now it's plus 25% tourism across our entire empire, bringing us up to 339. I think we got this in the bag. I think we're currently cruising for a bruising. I'm not seeing any theater squares over here, so I'm just gonna hop on a wonder and hope for the best with this guy. Radical history. Woo, a fourth tier performance. 750 tourism generated, didn't level up, but didn't die, which is awesome for us. So he's gonna keep on keeping on next turn and keep rocking the world, baby. I'm not sure if this is the win or not. It might be, might be. It is not. Ah, uh, 78 out of 75. Is it really gonna make us wait? It's gonna make us wait till the end of the turn. All right, we've won this. Let's have some fun with the rock band though. Let's have some fun with the rock band. Whoa, radical history. <laughs> Knows we've won. Now it's just leveling up. 1,500 tourism, lots of albums sold. Big fatty fat level up, look at that. And that's how rock bands work. You just keep on keeping on as much as you can. You wanna go through kind of every empire and recruit tourists evenly amongst everyone is a good general strategy. But let, let us bask in the glory of this victory. Woo! And that is how you win a culture game. Let's enjoy this. those accomplishments last and how they are remembered the beauty that you have inspired our people to create will ensure that our culture stands for all time and that is how you win a culture game on a regular difficulty on a regular game of civ with rome a civ i recommend to everyone if you take nothing away from this video, I'll break it down to a few really simple steps. All right, this was a three-parter, probably about two hours long, so it's a really long form tutorial. But I'll say you want high appeal, you want to avoid things that give negative appeal, avoid rainforest, avoid marsh, get rid of those, avoid putting down industrial zones, encampments, things that give you negative appeal. You want to put things down that give you high appeal, holy sites, woods, Anything that gives you high appeal is great. So you want high appeal, high culture. You want to focus on getting a high amount of culture. That doesn't mean you want to ignore science or gold or any of those things, but you want to focus on getting a high amount of culture. And the next thing you want to focus on is a high amount of tourism. So build your wonders, open your borders with everyone, send your trade routes to everyone. That'll give you as high of a tourism as you need to win a game. We want to turn 222, not my quickest victory ever, but very simple, a very easy, game we landed the plane just a kind of a front to back general culture win if you that's a guideline for you to follow there's now a guideline for you to follow what wonders to get what to build how to make it work and within there with different leaders with different civs results may vary you might want to focus on different things at different times but i hope that is a good overall tutorial for you so you guys can learn how to win your first culture game or maybe your 50th culture game i don't know where you're at but i hope if you watch through the two hours of this that you picked up something thank you so much for going through this with me i really enjoyed making this up next Next will probably be domination because I think that's fun, but it might be science. Who knows? Tune in next Monday to find out which victory with Rome we are doing next. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like and subscribe button. Let me know what you thought in the comments, and I will see you next time. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. We'll see you next time.